Welcome. This is where we get to talk and debate about all things paranormal, strange, and just plain weird. And from time to time, we're going to have special guests joining us, those who investigate ghosts and haunted places, hunt Bigfoot, chase UFOs, discover metaphysical mysteries, or uncover the truth surrounding urban legends and myths. I'm Jackie Meter, Director of Central California Paranormal Investigators, and sitting next to me is my co-host Monta Freitas of Blue North Investigations and member of the Ultimate Female Sasquatch Team. Hello. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Good. What have you been doing this last month <laughs> since oh I saw gosh. you last? I've been just, I've been crazy busy. But I was in Arizona for a while visiting my cousin. Well, you went to Jerome. So yes, we went to Jerome. Yeah, yeah my cousin June Anderson. Just love her, yeah. and I hope she watches the show. And um, anyway, yeah, she took me to Jerome uh, to the Grand Hotel, and we went to the Asylum, which is a restaurant in there. It was really good, super wow. good restaurant. Highly recommended. Yeah. And uh, the Jerome Hotel is really neat. It's a really hmm. neat place. I'd like to go back and stay there sometime. Okay. Yeah, really cool. Um, and we went all over, went to Sedona and tooled around. Yeah, and I've been to Sedona in a and, long uh, time. It's so beautiful there. What yeah. a neat place. Yeah, now, I, I didn't, of course, I don't know how sensitive I am, but I didn't feel like, you know, every corner there was a vortex or anything, but, <laughs> you know. Well, and it's supposed to be a hub of UFO activity as well, as, a not, as, as well as a, a spiritual, metaphysical environment. So, yeah. Yeah, that's what that's what, what we grew up in Arizona, and oh, we you used did? to go there all the time. When oh, I was, I know that. you know, yeah, from about ten to sixteen, I oh. we were in Arizona. So oh, okay. we used to go there all the time because my 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 father liked to hunt and mm -hmm. fish, and um, so we go camping up there a lot. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, but yeah, so it, but it was very very rustic, mm -hmm. you know, back then. So there wasn't all this big hype about it. It's metaphysical and spiritual yeah. qualities. And, but yeah, so, but yeah, I, I loved it. And it's been a while since I've been back. So I would imagine yeah. it's built up quite a bit more commercial. It's, um, there was one, you know, the main drag kind of in Sedona, <clears throat> excuse me, where we went was kind of touristy, you know, yeah. and there's a lot of shops yeah. and stuff. and. But, um, you know, I mean, the rocks and things, just the mountains, are oh, really, yeah. they're just yeah. so incredible, the colors. It's and beautiful. So, yeah, it was really beautiful. A really, really neat trip. I had a fantastic time, so I'm really Good. looking forward to going back. And so we still have to go ride in the Superstition Mountains, you and I. Yes, well, I'm, I'm ready. So <laughs> I'm ready. We're gonna, maybe this fall when it cools back down yeah. again. Oh, yeah, yeah, I don't want to go in the summertime. No, yeah. I, oh, no, that would be awful. So. It's interesting to camp out there, and uh, they have an overnight one. Yeah, because then we could camp. take binoculars and mm -hmm. look for UFOs and things. And they bring—I mm -hmm. I don't know that they bring horses in overnight. That's—that was the thing. That was the trouble I had mm -hmm. was finding a place, an outfit that would uh, provide the overnight accommodations, camping, and then mm -hmm. provide the horses to traverse the, mm -hmm. the mountains as well. I'll see what I can find. There are a couple different outfits that do it, mm -hmm. and um, they all look really legit. They have good reviews and stuff, so. Yeah, I didn't find that. I only found like three. Mm, there's yeah. a few, but then there's more. Like in Sedona, I saw a couple of businesses that said, you know, horseback riding trips, and I thought, well, I never heard about that one. So maybe they bust you out, and then, I don't know. But well, I thought, well, Maybe we'd take there. Sedona instead of Superstition Mountains. I don't know. Hmm. I don't know. I like Oh, well, I, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oops. We I'm digress. sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, we digress. <laughs> we're, we're, we're sitting here. Chit chatting. What we're going to do for this, this <laughs> next year. But anyway, I'm sorry. Uh, you want to get started? I will definitely get started okay. here. So, uh, I'm going to cut that out. Since we, <laughs> <laughs> since we talk about all things paranormal, we also talk about weird stuff, as you know. So here's something really strange that, um, that we came across, and I thought it was pretty intriguing, and this mm -hmm. is about head transplants. Yes, you heard me right. It seems they're not just a thing of quirky or B-rated horror movies, but now actually a possible medical procedure, supposedly. <laughs> Plus, be, now please be advised, uh, some of these photos that you're gonna be seeing may be disturbing to some viewers, and actually they're, one of them is particularly horrifying to me, so I've. Well, if I'm sitting here with my eyes closed, you'll know why. Uh, the first documented case was in the 50s when a surgeon and transplant pioneer, Vladimir Demikov, grafted, now this is the horrible one, the head and forelimbs of a puppy onto the body of a different dog. He followed this with his more famous work, which involved the creation of two-headed dogs. That's 
just so monstrous to me. I, I didn't even, put that I, picture I, in. Uh, that was okay. Good because it makes me it was really bad. Kind of yeah. sick to my stomach. Unsurprisingly, none of his animals lasted for more than a few days. This procedure eventually led to the first successful head transplant on a monkey in 1970 by Dr. Robert White, although White only demonstrated the feasibility of the procedure. Now, over 30 years later, medicine pro has progressed by leaps and bounds, and now one neurosurgeon believes that the procedure could be soon carried out on humans, and this may be ready to go in December of this year, 2017. Let's take a look at this video. The advice, some of these may be uh, disturbing yeah. for some years. Well, here's the thing. Just because we can, should we? I, that's a good question. I don't know. I think that it actually could be something for people that, like this Vladimir guy, who's willing to donate his live self yeah. to the cause. I mean, someone who's got such a debilitating disease or, or condition, um, if it was a donated cadaver body or something like that, or you know, that maybe he could live a normal life if that was his choice. Well, I don't know. I mean, what if it works? Then he's got somebody well, else's Well, yeah, um, I'm still a little confused. I mean, I don't know that it's it going to be a cadaver body or is it going to be somebody who is brain dead, say, and mm -hmm. will not mm -hmm. live, but the body is still alive. Mm -hmm. So they're going to take the, tra the, the head and trans his head mm -hmm. Uh, and then transplant it to this new body because the body is still probably, alive. That would probably be more likely. Uh, yeah, I, I wouldn't. Come to think I, wouldn't of it. I wouldn't expect uh, the cadaver because then they have no. to. They have to connect all the nerves. Yeah, and everything has already been gone for too long, probably. Yeah. So yeah, it's probably yeah. going to be a, maybe a brain dead person. Yeah. And, well, yeah. I don't know. I think um, I think that there are offshoots of it that could be really wonderful for people that are. Right. That are, I mean, like. like this, this guy, this yeah, like that poor guy. I mean, he's really brave. I, I to well, go through or to well, he hasn't been through it yet, but to to volunteer himself to go through something that could very well. He, well what has he got to lose? Well, you consciousness <laughs> forever. Well, that's true. But, but uh, I'm, I'm 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 thinking with somebody with that debilitating of a disease probably mm. has a very short lifespan. Um, maybe so, so. That may be what yeah. he's looking at, and it's like. It's, I'm, you know, going to be dying in a couple of years anyway. We might want to try this and see if it works. And if it did work, chance. can you imagine? Though? I mean, what if, what if Stephen Hawking said, "Let me at it," you know? How awesome <laughs> would that be? <laughs> I mean, you know? And then we could use like the guys on death row or something, you know? Well, yeah, if they wanted to you know, donate their bodies. I mean, it has to be all consent. I mean, but still. Yeah. Wow. Well. We can give their family a million bucks, you know. And yeah, you know, all of a sudden, you know, uh, Stephen Hawking has Scott Peterson's body, you know. <laughs> what happened to Scott Peterson? I don't know. <laughs> well, I, I think the, the, the question here is whether it's, it is an ethical one. Yeah, there's I mean, so many layers to it, yeah. Yeah, even if they were successful, um, you know, should they do it? I, you know, I'm, I'm kind of torn here because I, I I don't know but if it's someone who's say if it's your husband yeah 
And I don't know. I have to think about that one. You know, if it's someone, a loved one, <laughs> and you know that their life is going to be cut short for some horrible thing, and Brad Pitt volunteers his body, what do you do? <laughs> Who's to say what's really ethical? <laughs> uh, yeah, I would have to. Yeah, that would, you have to think about that. Uh, <laughs> yes. Uh, okay. <laughs> I thought about it. <laughs> Sign her up. We get the papers. We get. <laughs> yeah. You know, <laughs> so many layers of questions. And he's unconscious, so I, I have power of attorney, so I have to make all the medical decisions. <laughs> After Sorry, the show, honey. she may not. <laughs> I'm, sure, I'm sure you do the same for me. Yeah, I think Beyonce, uh, you know, might have volunteered her body. And, you know. <laughs> anyway, anyway, yeah, I, yeah, you know, I, part of me almost <laughs> hopes he doesn't get this done. Does it that doesn't work? Yeah. And but like you said, part of me says you know maybe gives hope to those that that are have such a debilitating physical disease, I, but their mind and their and their brain are, are fine. completely fine. Yeah, you know? I mean I hope I hope he does do it, and I hope that it does work. Mm -hmm. And I think it's going to be a, the next giant step in in a and hopefully a good direction for mankind. I mean that sounds so big and looming, but I mean really. I mean, I think that, again, there's so many ethical questions, but it's just there were so many, and there still are ethical questions, like with stem cell treatment, which helps right. so many people. I right. Mean, that so. I wasn't as concerned about, because it wasn't coming from, there didn't have to be a donor body and mm. that kind of thing. So, I mean, it was mm. more, I mean, these stem cells, they were, they were tossing them anyway. I mean, it wasn't mm -hmm. like they were keeping them for anything. Mm -hmm. So when when the research concluded that they would be a benefit, you know, they started harvesting these stem mm -hmm. cells. But, but yeah. you know, it makes me wonder too, if I could, you know how they say sometimes people that get a donated body part or an organ, mm -hmm. more or less, yeah. um, they start taking on the characteristics of that person. Every once in a while you'll hear a story really? about somebody, they didn't like artichokes before or something like that, and all of a sudden now that they've had the surgery, they love artichokes. and. Or something, or they, they like to, uh, you know, go to the racetrack or something that they never did that's very out of character for them. Hmm. And so I wonder if that would just be like on a gigantic scale, you know. Yeah, I well, guess we'll maybe see. We'll keep, every, keep you all updated. Yeah. But uh, For me, it'd be like jogging or something. Yeah. That's not like Sh me. Should be December, you know. If that's yeah, the December. earliest date that they, they, they plan on getting it all done. Yeah. So we'll see. We'll see. Very interesting stuff. And we're moving on because that subject really disturbs Mantra. <laughs> Only the puppy part. Only the Don't puppy. mess with dogs and monkeys. <laughs> monkeys, yeah. Don't do it. One of the most enduring urban myths in the Reno area involves Pyramid Lake. Located on the Paiute Indian Reservation, nearly every spring someone disappears. Their bodies are seldom recovered, and some say it's because of the 350-foot depth of the lake, but others claim it's the water babies. <coughs> so what are the water babies? Of course, that depends on who you ask, but if it's an established, but it is an established fact that long ago, members of the Paiute tribe threw ill-formed or premature babies into the lake. The tribe members felt that this was a necessary task to keep the tribe strong in the harsh desert environment. And now, the angry spirits of those infants occupy the lake, and these tormented spirits take their revenge on lake dwellers. I had never heard this no, I before. Heard yeah. I mean, I, I heard <coughs> water sprites and nymphs and that kind of thing, you know, in yeah. mythology, but I had ne never heard this uh, urban legend of water babies in Pyramid Lake who would take people and drown them, you know, and stuff, so. I hadn't either. I, I like you, have heard of, you know, the, the sprites and mm -hmm. the, you know, but I, I'd never heard of babies. Well, so. and I don't know, I, mean, I looked at some pictures and stuff and I, and I thought, well, you know, it's, you know, I mean, how, how would you, <laughs> there's speculation, because there really mm -hmm. are no photographs of a water baby, but, mm -hmm. you know, there was speculation on what these, what these things would look like. And if it's a baby, how would it have how would it be able to drag somebody, like from a boat or for some some other reason, so into I the water? I don't know, unless I mean. it's like got the strength of Chucky or something. Maybe <laughs> you know. I don't know. Maybe they organize. Well, a little bit of history. Um, it's, 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 the tribe lived in peaceful seclu the Paiute tribe lived in peaceful seclusion for centuries before the lake was discovered and mapped by American sp explorer John C. Fremont in 1844. Um, you know, it goes on to say about the 
tribe and how it was uh, uh, destructive for the Paiutes because of the... The land was the, desecrated yeah. and all that from... Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, and you know, people, the uh, white men cometh and destroyed the land. Mm -hmm. So, but, let's see. Um, so I guess they're calling it the Mermaid Curse. Um, okay. Um, the Paiute and many people blame the arrival of the white settlers in bloody war on a dark curse long said to hang over the lake. The old legend among the Paiute was that the lake was home of a race of mermaids and that one of these beings once fell in love with a village man. Uh, it goes on to say that he had finally announced to the, to the village that he was going to marry her. And, of course, that wasn't taken too well. Mm. Um, so, so he was banished. He and she were banished from the tribe, and she cast a curse on the lake, promising that all who lived there would forever experience hardship and misfortune. So they figure that's what, sp that's what sparked the war between the settlers and the, and the, the Paiutes. Hmm. And then there's um, the water babies, uh, demonic spirits inhabiting the clear waters. Um, they're said to look like babies with twisted with their faces twisted by rage and hate and they are claimed to lurk under the surface waiting for victims to wander too close to the water. Then they drag them down to their deaths. Um, okay, one version populated, uh, propagated by most early European was that the Piet had the disturbing habit of disposing of the unwanted deformed babies in the lake. Yeah. Yeah. That's not nice. Yeah. And the Piet themselves say that the water babies are the result of a great serpent who one day emerged to feed on the baby of a mother who was washing clothes. The demonic spirit then took the form of the baby and began devouring the mother as well. That's violent. Wow. Only, only stopping when it made a, de made a deal with the village shaman that it would be allowed to prowl the lake in exchange for letting the mother live. Well, it already ate her baby, so, uh, you know. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeesh. That's, just, that, that's pretty, that's pretty. This hideous. is a gruesome show today. It is a gruesome show today. Yes, it is a gruesome. It well, is. It, it gets lighter. <laughs> it gets lighter. I promise it gets lighter. I'm going to be yeah. so depressed by the time this is over. But I, I, but I think the, the point here is not how gruesome <laughs> the water babies are, but that supposedly this urban legend has been around for a very, very long time, mm. and that the Paiutes, uh, um, tell the story. They may have a little different twist on it yeah. but than the European settlers did. But um, And that was probably to explain why the Paiutes would throw their babies into the lake if they were if they were Deformed ill-formed or, or whatever. you know, what, premature uh, to keep the, the tribe strong. I mean, I don't think that's so uncommon. I think a lot of mm -hmm. tribes did that uh, just to keep the tribe strong. Um, I don't think that was necessarily a, just a Paiute thing. I mm -hmm. think that a lot of tribes did that. Wow. Um, mm -hmm. But you know, I think I think early man did the same. The Neanderthals did the same thing. It's if there was something understand. wrong with it, yeah. Then, and, yeah. And, and animals into this to this day animals will do, do the same. Will do, will do the same thing. So they do. you know, yeah. I don't think that's that's so surprising. But yeah. um, to yeah. the Europeans, it would be probably horrific. And so they mm -hmm. made up this story, maybe to keep the, the tribe from from doing any more. They don't want to add more water babies, evil oh. water babies. To the, that's to a the good. Lake. That's, a, that's an interesting theory. Yeah, yeah. maybe that is. So they made there. up this story so that uh, they quit doing they that. They quit doing it. Golly. Yeah. yeah just... um, apparently, there are. This happens mostly in the spring. Uh, a lot of people uh, have accidents there because uh, when they're fishing. Uh, at least every spring, at least <coughs> one fisherman <coughs> vanishes, according to the townspeople. And they vanished out of trace, and that could be attributed to falling in and drowning, and or whether it's COVID, so many other things that could happen. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> it says um, the wet, bad weather conditions could play a part in that. A sharp increase in water depth close to shore, which drops abrupt, abruptly down to 350, 350 feet, and the effects of copious amounts of alcohol. <laughs> 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 I think is a is a danger you know, on any <laughs> lake. <laughs> yeah, and scuba, di scuba divers have also mysteriously d drowned in the lake. Curiously, mostly in spring, with some bodies never found. Mm. Uh, perhaps even stranger are the disappearances. Are the occasional uh, one cases of the corpses 
of drowning victims turning up floating around in nearby Lake Tahoe and vice versa. Are they are these lakes connected? On a well, map? I mean, it, apparently the Pyramid Lake is fed by the Truckee River, so which is an outflow from Lake Tahoe. So these corpses, corpses would have to swim upstream. <laughs> 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 you know, uh, go figure. I don't think I look forward to doing that after I'm uh, dead. Having to swim upstream and my poor dead yeah. corpse, no. The oh. corpses from Lake Tahoe somehow floated over the spillway and were swept down the river to Pyramid Lake. <laughs> that doesn't make sense. Although it doesn't explain how they could go in the opposite direction. No, like it I doesn't. Hmm. Like they're spawning. Water babies. Maybe they're corpses are spawning. And for now, no one really knows and adds another creepy layer to the, myster the mystery of the place. Reno Mythbusters and Ghost Hunters are still baffled by the paranormal um, presence that looms over Pyramid Lake. People still report that they hear the dejected cries of an invisible baby or the laughter of ghostly children. Such noises constitute a bad omen. According to the Pyramid Lake natives, if you hear it, it's bad news. If you see it, you're dead. So if you're planning a visit to Pyramid Lake outside of Reno, Nevada, stop by the Pyramid Lake Paiute Tribe Museum and Visitor Center. Or you may want to fish near the shoreline, or better yet, admire the beauty of the lake from a safe distance. That's you me. You may want to fish near the shoreline <laughs> and admire the spawning corpses going upstream. <laughs> spawning like salmon. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I learned somebody <coughs> explain to me how that's done. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they've got little flippers on. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, but, that, but, you know, that's, um, I hadn't heard that about any lake. Um, so that was interesting. It was fascinating. <laughs> it I'd is. Like to go. I'd, I'd, really, I'd like I'd to go, like too. I'd like to stop and see and, you know, kind of just kind of feel the place out. Take Get some pictures. sonar. Let's see if you, there's any, you know, human figures under the water going up. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that sonar would pick up something uh, unless it was solid. Well, it'd be I don't fairly water, solid. Water babies, I don't know that are solid. No, but an upstream corpse would be. Well, that's true. And that's newsworthy right there. That's true. I, I don't know that. We I have to have a whole other show on those upstream <laughs> I swimming. I don't want to do that. Look at Mary's <laughs> doing the backstroke. <laughs> funny. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going to lighten this up a little bit because <laughs> you know what time it is, right? <laughs> It's that time again. Yes. As the paranormal world turns. Okay, so imagine yourself on a ghost tour of paranormal hotspots which are being led by the local ghost hunters. There you are in the graveyard and all of a sudden you hear groans and moaning. What do you do? Do you run? Do you hide? Do you grab your camera? Or do you investigate? Well, these folks went closer. The better to hear the paranormal activity and what do you think they found? Well, if you guessed a, porno, a, a pornographic film <laughs> set complete with cameras rolling and a couple in the ivy frolicking to their heart's content, oblivious to everything around them, then yes, you'd be right. Seems a tour group looking for ghosts on Skullcoats Lane in Hull in the UK stumbled upon just that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I... <laughs> <laughs> You know, I don't think it's, it's all that uncommon. I think it's fairly common where people go off to do a little hanky-panky in an abandoned building, most, probably mostly teenagers, yeah. you know, and stuff, and, or whatever. And yeah, but it sounds like a whole set. I mean, like they've got well, everything yeah, set up. Yeah, they were in this remote section of the, of the cemetery. Uh, yeah, it says a, a, um, got an eyeful. The group got an eyeful when they realized they just walked into the middle of a porn shoot. So they thought they... Uh, the group of investigators had thought they were recording the sound of disembodied moans. <laughs> but it turned out to be a whole bunch of adult film stars getting busy. Yeah, can you knock on the wall? Wait, <laughs> they aren't stopping. <laughs> so well, I would be surprised, but I don't think it's that uncommon to walk in. I mean, like I said, you go into a abandoned building, you mean you, you, there's always a chance encounter with uh, um, homeless, I'd say, homeless people. I'd say you'd run into that. I mean, yeah. I, I've so. been doing this, and so have you, for many, I've been doing this for over 30 years, and you, I know, have been doing it a very long time, too, and I've never run into anybody naked, yeah. anybody getting busy. <laughs> this is a family show, sorry. We've run um, into homeless people. Yeah, so. I've run into uh, places where they've been, 
So like they were sleeping in and stuff like that. But I've, I've, never, I've never had anything like that. Yeah. So, and I've been in some pretty remote, weird spots too, and I don't know. Even Bigfooting, I've never run anybody out in the woods, you know, trying to procreate, thank God. So, <laughs> with cameras, well, mind you. Well, geez, you know, I mean, I don't know. I mean, what does it say here? The, the, the well, I yeah. guess, <laughs> Well, I guess here. the woman on the ground no, noticed the tour group first. Uh, when they, <laughs> well, people they didn't know where to look. I guess <laughs> not. Where do you look? <laughs> yeah. I think I know where I look, but I don't want to say. So it says, uh, they went to investigate. They were stunned to find a young woman having sex with a man in a patch of ivy. Ow. Well, ivy's not bad. It's, it's when pokey. You get, when you get to the poison ivy that... Uh, if it was poison ivy. Right, yeah. honey? <laughs> when you get to the poison ivy. <laughs> two, two other men were so busy filming. <laughs> uh -oh. yeah. Do tell. Mm. After show. That's after the after show. show. <laughs> oh, dang it. That's the R plus rated after show. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Two other men were so busy filming the broad daylight romp with video cameras, they did not realize they had an audience. A ghost guide, Mike Covell, said it was the couple who saw us first. <laughs> now, plug your children's ears. He says, they were going at it like knives among the ivy. She was the blonde. What does that have to do with it? I know. I, I, <laughs> you're blonde? Tell yeah, me. What, what does that have to do with it? <laughs> she, was the, she wasn't so camouflaged in the ivy, maybe? Cause she was, I don't know. When did she push the guy off her when she noticed the group? <laughs> And then he, she ran off, and he was running after her, desperately trying to cover his private parts. Oh my gosh. Well, and through the brambles, like I said, prickly. Now, prickly. if you're doing this on film, why even bother trying to cover up your privates? Everybody and their grand, well, grandma's not going to be watching, but I mean, everybody's going to be seeing your, your expose. <laughs> yeah, this is a um, good job. All 12 people on the tour were adults because sometimes kids come along. Oh, golly. <laughs> One elderly man was so incensed he was ready to chase after them with his walking stick, but I persuaded him to calm down and eat his sandwiches. <laughs> well, well. <laughs> Let's have so, lunch. Let's do lunch. Why, jolly good. Pass the mayo. Let's do lunch. Do you have any gray poupon? <laughs> the next time you find yourself in the middle of, of a haunted location and something in the distance cries out, you might want to think twice before firing up the night. Well, actually, I would fire it up first <laughs> before firing up the night vision camera and chasing down the moans. I, I, oh, no, no. I would be chasing down the moans. Yeah, I'd be I, chasing I, them yeah, down, too. I would, I would, yeah. But if it turned out it was, a, you know, some people going at it like knives in the ivy. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Bloody good show. <laughs> Carry <Kidding> on. <laughs> It's funny, you know. <laughs> nobody was hurt. One guy was a little outraged that they would be there, you know. Boy, but I, I'd you start know. charging more on those tours, <laughs> and we may come across some naked people for an extra five dollars. You know, yeah. So <laughs> my eyes are watering. <laughs> <laughs> All right, moving on. <laughs> if you're a ghost hunter, there's no shortage of ghost hunting equipment on the market today to see, hear, and even communicate with spirits. So chances are there's a gadget with your name on it that claims to do all that. But what if you're not interested in communicating with the spirits? Most people who experience paranormal activity already know they have a non-paying roommate in their home. And there are not many options other than the old fashioned way with holy water and sage. And even that's not a guarantee. So now what? Well, you're in luck. A new device invented by the Super Boondi Company of Thailand claims it will blast that phantom from your home with wave killer technology. For just $1,499 plus shipping and tax, you too can rid your home of unwanted spirits with the, with the just released new version of the Tr Trisakari Ghost Repellent Machine. <laughs> <laughs> and folks, even have the schematics for this specially designed machine. You want one for Christmas? <laughs> oh, it looks very simple. <laughs> well, look at that. Yeah, you know, it's it's as simple as my blow dryer. <laughs> yeah, probably probably simpler. <laughs> I, you know, I guess, I guess buyer beware. You know, I mean, come on, you know. 
you know. You know, I, I did go on, I, when I did the research, I went online to see what else was out there. Because I had heard about a guy in Australia who built a machine. This was a couple of, three years ago, maybe even five years ago. Mm -hmm. And I was trying to find that article. And it, like I said, looked more like a guillotine than an actual <laughs> trap machine, like a <laughs> Ghostbusters or whatever. <laughs> but there were five, five, six pages of do-it-yourself ghost trapping machines. <laughs> you could buy the kits. You could, like you had the schematics, you could buy uh, this do-it-yourself. You could buy them already made. Well, where there's a need. I suppose I mean, there's going to be a market. Well, there, but there's on, people that people. think that this probably does work. There are people that are that unfortunately are, may be uneducated in the the realm of that and think that maybe this is something that, you know. Those are the ones that need the head transplants. <laughs> or should I say brain transplants? Maybe they, well, you know. Oh, I, come on. It's, yeah. You know, I think people that, that um, there's people that buy this. I mean, the, well, I agree. The, um, I agree there. I agree that there are there are people that buy this stuff. You know, and I just you don't want to say, come on, people, use your head. <laughs> we won't have to trade it out for a new model. Hey, that would you be know. a great joke for that head transplant. <laughs> You're just not using your head today, Fred. Wait a minute, that's somebody else's. Okay, so the the <laughs> that's why. So the. Uh, <laughs> The Super Boondi Company. I just, I love that name. That's great. Super Boondi. Well, I, I'm glad I made your day. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty easy to make my day, apparently. Anyway, yeah, folks, just beware, you know. <laughs> seek out a profession. Before you buy anything like this at 14, almost $1,500, uh, just beware. Talk to a professional, somebody. Contact her Jackie. Opinion. Yeah, contact her. Call me. You know, call me. <laughs> she, she, she will help you out with that stuff. Yeah, I'll now, help you if out. If you need a head transplant, don't call me. Call Jackie. <laughs> she can help you out with that too. All right, time for us to get serious again. <laughs> and well, Bunch is going to do that for us. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah. Now, we came across this story, one that we've never heard of, and thought, you know, this is pretty interesting. The Faces of Belmez. It's an alleged paranormal phenomenon that happened in the house, in a house in Spain, in August 20, on August 23, 1971. Let's take a look at the video. On August 23, 1971, Maria Gomez Pereira, Ni Camara noticed that a human face had formed in the concrete of her home in Belmez, Spain. Maria could tell it was the face of a man, even though the image was not very well defined. Understandably, concerned she got her husband and son to smash the floor with pickaxes and relay some new concrete. Within a week, the same face had reappeared, in exactly the same spot. Once again Maria wanted the concrete removed. But word had already spread, and the mayor together with several other authorities, forbade its destruction. Instead, this new face was cut out of the concrete and mounted on the wall. Once again new concrete was poured, and for a while it looked like all was back to normal. However two weeks later, faces again started to appear. First the male face appeared, and then a female face appeared. Before long. Around a dozen faces were visible in the floor. These faces were of different size, shape and clarity. While some of the faces were questionable, others were very clear indeed, right down to the wrinkles around the eyes. Many onlookers made their way to the house, in order to check out the faces. Some were shocked to see that new faces would appear within days, while expressions would change on the older faces. All interpreted the expressions differently with the most popular interpretations being fear and despair. Many theories came about as to why the faces were appearing in the floor. One popular theory was that the house was built on an old cemetery. It is said that an excavation beneath the house took place, and several bodies were disinterred and removed to be reburied elsewhere, however this did not stop more faces from forming. All attempts at washing away the faces failed. Cleaning agents, Bleaches and even plain water failed to remove the faces. At times, 
they seemed to fade a little only to come back within hours. It was not long before professional investigators were called out to look into this apparent paranormal phenomenon. Many experiments were carried out, including chemical analysis of the concrete, and any compounds found within it. These early tests determined that no paint was found in either of the two faces they tested in fine detail. Another experiment conducted was that they covered the faces in a clear, transparent sheet of plastic. This was made in an attempt to stop any form of human contact with the floor and the faces during the investigation. It was found that although the faces were covered, and human intervention was difficult, the faces still evolved and maintained their spooky routine. Tape recorders were left in the house which was locked and sealed tight. The family were located elsewhere and no one had access to the house. When the audio was played back the sounds of human moaning and wailing could just be made out. Was the source of these disturbing sounds the cause for the human features in the kitchen? A full-scale investigation commenced, spearhead by the Spanish Institute for Ceramics and Glass. Researchers photographed and mapped out the floor of the Pereira home before covering it in cloth and sealing it in wax to prevent tampering. A local notary stood witness as the room was sealed. When they opened the room and uncovered the floor months later, Researchers discovered that the faces had indeed moved and transformed. But the investigation failed to provide an answer as to why the Belmez faces lived out their lives in the Pereira home, or where they came from. Another theory was that Maria was somehow, and unaware of it herself, projecting the faces into the floor. Possibly, the first face was a freak occurrence of a mold formation in a pattern, that her brain had interpreted as a face and following this, her strong belief, and some latent power within her formed the new faces, then there is the belief it was all a hoax. Maybe Maria, her son, her husband or all three were responsible for painting on the faces, although the original tests stated there was no paint to be found in the concrete, there were traces of elements used in paint found. These elements are also found in concrete throughout the house, so it was inconclusive at the time. However a concoction of vinegar and soot, or some other dark substance, was put forward as a potential candidate for how humans could have been able to make the faces. As always there are those that believe that the faces were not made by human hands. There are others that believe that it was all a hoax and finally there are those that believe it is all just a freak occurrence. In 2004 Maria Pereira died at the age of 85. What do you think? An elaborate fraud? A series of coincidences, and wrongful interpretations of the patterns in the kitchen? Or, as some investigators have stated, one of the most important paranormal phenomena of the 20th century? One thing is for certain, the empty eyes of the Belmez faces continued to peer up from the floor of the house. You know, when I was researching this, um, there were a couple of different uh, endings. Some, uh, some said that um, the faces had stopped when she passed, when she huh. died in 2002, right, 2002. So they had stopped, and then another, I'd read another article and they'd say the faces continued. So I'm not sure what, what happened. We do know that she never collected a penny her, the house was open for tourists to, to look, uh -huh. but she never she never made any financial gain off of it. Huh. And she'd lived in the house, I think, what, 30 years, 40 years, something like that? Huh. Yeah. Um, also, after she passed, they said that it, that it was her son, Diego, uh -huh. one of her sons, who perpetuated it. Uh -huh. But I don't know. I, I, you know, I don't know. You know, after looking and then reading both the pros and cons and and looking at the faces and stuff, and you can, um, and then the, the, the analysis of the, the paint, what they thought was paint, but they found no paint. Huh. They found elements that, 
that's used, but the rest of the house had the same elements, mm -hmm. the rest of the concrete in the house. Huh. <clears throat> so, um, you know, I, know. I, I wonder what's happening, if the house is still standing now. Yes, but I know it is, hmm. yes. I wonder if there's any current investigating going on. Uh, or if the son still lives there. I don't know. Maybe but it supposedly was they stopped after she died. Hmm. That's why they're thinking maybe she manifested. Either she drew them or she manifested them. Well, maybe the son was doing it thinking he'd make some money and she didn't but know. She didn't, but she never, they never she, made any money. Yeah. They never made money. Maybe he thought So was. why would they perpetuate uh, a hoax and not get any kind of financial uh, gain out of it? I don't know. So that doesn't make sense. Hmm. And it wasn't like it was notoriety. It may have been local notoriety, maybe mm -hmm. over in Spain, but mm -hmm. <clears throat> not, I mean, I'd never heard of it before. Mm -hmm. hmm. So it's not something that's widely known. So obviously they've stopped. Um, mm -hmm. you know, we'd have heard about it. Mm -hmm. or, and um, they, they didn't make any money off of it, so. You, you never know. know what drives, if it, if it was a hoax, which it could have been, if it was a hoax, what drives somebody to do that? A lot of, you know, usually number one is monetary reasons, but right. it, it could have been, say, if it was a hoax, hypothetically, you know, maybe this, the son, Diego, was in love with some woman and he wasn't, you know, known in the town or who knows what, you know what I mean? It that's a stretch. That's a stretch, though. I think that's, that's true, a stretch. but you never know. That's I'm just, I'm stretch. making all this up, so I don't know. But I'm just saying, <coughs> there's a lot of reasons why people will fake stuff just for even attention. And he, you know? he may have so. done that after she died. He may have done that to attract, to attract attention. Yeah. But while she was living, mm -hmm. he was either very young, mm -hmm. you know, because this happened over a long period of time, mm -hmm. okay? Yeah, you know, who knows? Maybe it was her. Maybe so, it wasn't her. Uh, I mean, I, I tend to believe it. I mean, they did an actual, I mean, they did a thorough chemical analysis. Mm -hmm. And they sealed off. So they sealed off, sealed it in wax, you know, whatever to preserve it, to mm -hmm. keep people from stepping on it and tampering with it. Mm -hmm. So they went through all these elaborate methods to make sure that it stayed uncompromised, mm -hmm. okay? Um, during during their, their testing process and their 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 investigation. Mm -hmm. And there's been several, several teams, several people, psychics and several scientists in, in, in there looking at this. So, mm -hmm. but uh, if I it, don't know. But if it is some sort of phenomena that we can't explain or understand, why hasn't it happened anywhere else? It's just... Look at the Shroud of Turin. Yeah, that's really debatable too. I mean, I, I you know, I mean, I don't know. But, yeah, but this is a concrete... I mean, building and a floor. I mean, I, how many times do you see a Jesus uh, in, in a tortilla or a piece of toast? Yeah, I think there was one that sold for a whole bunch on eBay, too. Yeah, Wasn't there yeah, something crazy like yeah. that? Yeah, and, I, and some of it's pareidolia, too. But, but yes, you know, these were pretty this is plain not, faces. This is not pareidolia. No, that, those that, were pretty interesting looking. Yeah. And some of them uh, looked as though they were different. Uh, some of them were very... Um, um, Amateurish, maybe in how they were drawn, and others actually that I was pretty looking complex. at the video, they're pretty spooky looking. Yeah, yeah kind of creepy. And the, so. the the um, um I was gonna say, and the the um, the complexity of mixing these elements. Uh, there was no paint, so mm -hmm. uh, so if you had to put this image into this concrete, there's certain chemicals you had to use. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. um, and. They didn't find any of that, and besides, who in that village would know how to put these chemicals together to be mm. able to do that? I don't, I don't think the, I don't think the expertise was there mm -hmm. back then. Mm -hmm. I don't. I mean, we're talking what forty years ago, and it went on for uh, yeah, when it started forty mm -hmm. years ago. So I, I I don't think the expertise was there among the villagers to be able to to perpetuate a hoax like this. It was just too sophisticated, um, and like I said, the the. The, f the faces are too, some of them are too intricate and too complex, hmm. so. I don't know, I, I don't I'm, I'm leaning on the side of I, I don't know, well, you it. do that to me all the time. Well, <laughs> because you know, I guess I'm just, I'm, well, I'm a, and you're a, we're both skeptics, of course, but it's just that it just seems like, I don't know. It, this would, something close to it, and should have happened somewhere else by now, at least. We should have, I mean, not. Not necessarily, not necessarily. Because Look concrete, the, though, I mean. I mean, look at the uh, Bernadette and her visions of uh, Mary and the, the, the uh, visions of the Blessed Virgin and then the roses appearing on the ground. And I mean, there's all kinds of verified, witnessed 
activity, paranormal activity. Well, yeah, and I've seen so, some weird stuff too, but you know what, I mean, it doesn't mean things aren't <laughs> real, all things, but I just think this particular story, there's so many avenues for, uh, I don't know, for some sort of uh, human yeah, intervention I understand. of some I kind. Understand. So, but I, you know, I wasn't there. It may be something that truly is paranormal. I don't know, at this point, it, it seems like we just don't have enough evidence either way, really. I think there's plenty of evidence, and I'm gonna disagree with you. I think there's plenty of evidence. I think they did a thorough, thorough, I mean, down to chemical analysis and, and analysis and, um, over, and this is over a long period of time. They just to go in there once, do mm -hmm. it, and then leave, not go back. They did it over a long period. So I, you know, yeah. with, with all due respect, I'm gonna disagree. Oh, sure, I think sure. this is probably more, more, I mean, I tend to believe it, at least parts of it. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, may, they may have added faces, the family may have added faces to help See. keep it going. Yeah. But I think, I think for the most part, I think it's actually real. I think it's See, I real. want to know who did the chemical studies. Who are these people? Well, what are their there applications? Are Were they paid off? Yeah. Or, you know, I mean, I want to know the whole chain of custody right. on this stuff. So that's, and I agree with you. You know. But I think you need to go online because I did see other two other videos where it does list who, what scientists were involved, mm -hmm. what laboratories were involved, what mm -hmm. universities were involved mm -hmm. in, the, in the investigation. So there, mm -hmm. the, the research is out there. Mm -hmm. um, if you want to, if you want to have it verified and, mm -hmm. and validated for mm -hmm. for yourself, anyway. But yeah, because I when I did look, I looked at three or four different videos and read yeah. articles, and yeah, um, I just came. And like I said, there's there's still two contra mm -hmm. controversies, two theories, mm -hmm. but I'm intending to lean towards that it, that it was real. Hmm. They did bring up one thing: photography. Did you see that? What was it also called? known as psychic photography, oh, oh. Mm -hmm. which first emerged in the 19th century as spirit photography. But, um, you know, uh, now uh, photography. There's, there's, um, and I can't remember the name of it, but it was. There's a house somewhere down, and I think in L.A. I believe it is. I could be wrong about that. Where um, they had taken a Polaroid camera, yes, and they were taking these Polaroid pictures. And there would be words and answers to questions yes, and things on it. Yes, that was the, um, not the Oliva's house. Um, mm. But it were these two men that lived there. Yes. I think they still live there. And yes. there was the whole book that they did on and it. And Bill was, Murphy was involved with that experiment. Yes, uh -huh. and it was so mm -hmm. interesting. Now that really intrigues me because that's, yes. how do you, how do you fake that? I mean, that was, that, I mean, there are ways to fake a Polaroid. And I trust Bill but, Murphy. If, if, you know, he, he yeah. wouldn't be one to perpetuate a hoax. So, yeah. Yeah. So that is kind of like this photography of, you know, you're, there are images being burned onto some sort of surface that um, it's a paranormal event. So, yeah. um, you know, it does. Yeah. It, so it, it can happen. It can happen. Um, but I just don't believe this one. I just can't. I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> How much time do we have left? We got enough time left? Ten minutes? Okay, we got enough time. All right. Uh, some of you know uh, that each year uh, the CCPI team has an annual get-together for current and former students of my Paranormal Studies program. Always at a historical place with lots of paranormal activity. This last one was at the Sarah Sky Ranch in Oakhurst, my home away from home. We also <laughs> taped an episode of our show on, on location at the ranch with Richard and Debbie Sennett, which we aired a couple of months ago. We also got a chance to do a little investigating, and everybody yeah. had fun. Everybody was just, you know, I mean, they're on their they're on their A game, and uh, I mean, it's unfortunate we didn't have more evidence, but you know, that's that's the name of the game. Mm -hmm. That's the name of the game. Sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. Uh, but we do have some personal experiences, and let me see. I think one was from, <laughs> and this is funny, from Anita, who's in our control room. She was really tired, and uh, she went to bed. Let's see oops, if I can get find her. Here it is. And there was a very small incident, she said. Even after a little nap, I was so tired, having got only a few hours sleep uh, the, the, the night before. Then with the filming the show during the day and filming into the night, I finally got to my room. I was really tired and grumpy. Nita? I can't imagine that. Anita She's grumpy? too sweet. She's Nita's never grumpy. not grumpy. I had just pulled the covers over me and started to relax when the bathroom door began to slowly open. Irritated, I said, don't you dare. The door stopped. There were no further incidents. 
<laughs> I don't know what room she was in. I, I, she didn't tell me what room she was in, but uh, you know that's 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 pretty typical mm -hmm. in all the rooms. I mean, the, the spirits up there wander, so you know, you know it's not <coughs> just room seven that's haunted or room twelve is haunted. They do wander, they do roam around, so you're liable to get activity in any number of the rooms mm -hmm. at any at any given time, day or night. Mm -hmm. So, and it's always pretty you know, minor. It's, there's nothing threatening, and there's no evil intent and stuff. It's just a lot of kind of a prankster type things, tricks and whatever, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and then I think um, that's a from Vince, one our, on our team. Um, it was on a Saturday night. Uh, he had ghost um, some childlike responses to questions. Um, and then he was saying that they had some uh, knocking responses to questions in my room, which was downstairs, and then they had an Echo Vox uh, app session, which was held with three ladies as witnesses, and I think that was Debbie, Barbara, and Carolyn. And so they had, he had some with the Echo Vox, he had some uh, positive results with the Echo Vox. Um, so I think, um, I don't know if I, can sh if I can get them on in here during post or not. Um, then they had some uh, in the library, uh, aired the EMF detectors would answer questions um, with the detector by the green and the red lights and um, in the background they could hear a uh, female child's voice uh, saying, saying stuff. And the dowsing rods were very active. Yes, and I actually took part in that and that was um, with Richard Sennett and that was really, really cool. Mm -hmm. um, that's only the second place in all these years that I've ever felt like it, how it feels is when you almost like you stick your a fork in electric socket yeah you're just so mm -hmm. like electric it's a very strange feeling and you feel electricity kind of like running all the way up the top of your head and back down the hairs are standing up on your arms etc so it's a very weird feeling and um we were doing a dowsing rod session and getting some really really neat results and some 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 relevant answers to things and um it was very cool very very cool and actually richard had a, uh, uh, something manifest in his room. Yes. He had, uh, I think it was a woman. Yes. That um, appeared in his uh, hotel room when he, I think he got out of the shower or something and he saw her and she vanished. And I think I, he was in room seven, if I'm not mistaken. Was he? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, and I don't think, I don't know if she had feet or not. I remember there's something about that. Maybe she didn't have, I can't remember. But anyway. He couldn't see any feet. But I, I don't, was she was partially covered or something. blocked or not. He couldn't see it. But yeah, so he he had a really interesting uh, thing happen there. Besides the um, the dowsing rods, I mean, it was it was just a really really good session. Well, what so. got me too is that we with the dowsing rods, they got some very specific answers yes. mm -hmm. to specific questions. Yes. So it wasn't like just a haphazard, you know, uh, session. Yeah. So I mean, there was I mean, you know, and uh, it was weird because we'd be getting answers, and then we'd kind of narrow it down to you know, is it a are we talking to a man or woman? Were you in the service? Were you blah blah blah? And we get all these answers, and then it would be like that person just walked away, and then somebody else came up. It was, a, and then we'd start having to ask those questions all over again because it wasn't the same person. Yeah, it wasn't the same person. It was so yeah. strange, and yeah. and uh, it's like you had a line of people waiting to to communicate to. with us. And, yeah. and, and that's not unusual. I mean, I, we've had that happen there, up there as well. Yeah. You know, they they kind of line up, yeah. you know, and just, just to talk, so. It was a really active place, really, and not in a frightening, scary way. It was very active in a, um, they just want to interact with you. They want to tell their story and they want to let you know who they were. So, um, now the seance was a little different. Yes. That got a little weird, but you know, other than that, I had fun. It was, was great. great. Yeah, yeah, it was very. You want cool. to see the seance? It's I think last month. No, the, the time month, before that. Time before that. Yeah. Yeah. It's in this last two three months that we had the seance, and, was, and uh, we had some really good results. I mean, Debbie did an outstanding job channeling those those spirits, and um, yeah. Um, I mean, it's always a pleasure to work with her anyway. So. Oh yeah, for yeah, sure. She's she's very kind of down to earth and very you know. Her and Richard very are good just at what she awesome. does. She's very talented. Very mm -hmm. talented. Mm -hmm. Anyway, we all had a good time. I mean, yeah. that was that's the whole point of the weekend. Yeah. And we have those uh, once a year, usually the first weekend at, in November. Uh, we try to pick a, a historical place, and so it's open to students and former students and current students and 
you know, it says to kind of keep their skills, you know, active. You know, these are people that don't necessarily want to investigate on a full-time basis, but want to keep their skills and their interest alive. And uh, so mm -hmm. we do, I do this for them. And mm -hmm. so. A lot of fun. Had a great time. Great, yeah. great time. Yeah. yeah. We do, and we do have some guests, you know, sometimes. Mm -hmm. Stuff that's just us. You know, but yeah, we had a really, had a really yeah, good time. Really cool place. If you ever out there, that's a neat place to stop over. If you yeah. have a Sarah chance to spend the night there, I would highly recommend it. Really, and Oakhurst. Yeah, and, and we'll Oakhurst. Put the link. We'll put the link on the bottom so you guys yeah. can get up there. Beautiful town. It's yeah. at the foothills of uh, Yosemite. So, yeah. So, uh, yeah. Well, that about wraps it up. Is that it for us? I think that's it for this episode. Want to see what CCPI is up to by checking their website and calendar at www.ccpifresno.org uh, or http colon slash slash www.ccpifresno.org and you can check out what I've been doing at uh, facebook.com the female Bigfoot team. Be the ultimate yeah, female. it's actually the ultimate female Bigfoot, Bigfoot team, team on Facebook. Uh, or you can go to uh, Blue North Investigations, which actually is very outdated, so I wouldn't recommend it at this time, but anyway. <laughs> we'll take that off. <laughs> oh, no, let's keep it on, because one of these okay. days we're going to update it. Okay. Anyhow, to see what we're up to. So we will see you back for our next show when we talk about more paranormal topics on the last Wednesday of each month on the same channel and time. Hope you've enjoyed our show, and if you like what you've seen so far, go to our Facebook page, see what's coming up next, post comments, ask questions, Watch past shows and don't forget to like our page www.facebook.com slash paranormaljourneys.com uh, And I also want to give, uh, let the people know that I think we're going to shout out to uh, Melinda Ryan and Bill and then we've got Rita Sertucci Baeza and Connie Jacks and um, Kat <coughs> watching. Um, anyway, to let people know that we have a really good guest coming on next month. I hope, I hope, I hope, hope if everything goes well. Um, we're going to be talking about some good stuff. And you're going to have to look <laughs> at our Facebook page, though, to find out what that is. Because I ain't telling you here. Uh-oh. Oh, boy. <laughs> All right. And with that, take care. And be safe. <laughs>